hamster? Damn, man. There's more reading in the first minute of this movie than a Star Wars opening crawl. Gulf of Mexico? Gulf of Mexico? This shipment's coming from the Netherlands and is landing in Miami. I don't care if there are trade routes you gotta follow, or international maritime law, or the f Coriolis effect, or whatever the f There's no reason for this shipment to go all the way to the Gulf of Mexico on its way to Miami. Bitches. The movie announces very early its intention to celebrate the attributes of its female cast members. It's 9-11. We've gone high-tech over the water, so the dope runners have gone low. Is this context really necessary for the team members? Shouldn't they be hearing specifically about the mission right now? Next step back to Napa's next mess nose now. Hey, dude, you gotta learn the words. We usually only do the chorus. Then why did you start singing the verse? You're the dumbass here, but you're acting like it's not your fault, dumbass. Alpha leader, hit it, break it. Repeat your transmission. Radio trouble. F***ing radio trouble. Discount really young Michael Shannon. Holy f Looks like we got us a situation here! Well, the situation is that a bunch of asshole white supremacists are burning a cross at a rally on the same night they're receiving payment for somehow facilitating an expensive deal for a Cuban drug lord. Mike and Marcus blow their cover before making radio contact with their teams, and experienced detective Marcus gets dropped on by a dumbass redneck clansman. Do I have that stupid? See, that's some new spiritual bull my partner's on. How is it possible this scene is giving me anxiety and boring me to death at the same time? I am way too unstable for that bull What's less believable is that the highly trained special forces team is unable to hear or see this confrontation and therefore move in. Or that none of these f***ing hicks has pulled out a firearm by now. Rock and roll, let's go! F*** you, Black Flag. Random gunfire occurs and now you want to giddy up? How is there still so many goddamn clansmen here? Mike and Marcus have been killing the f*** out of these assholes for several minutes. Are they regenerating NPCs? Yo, Mike, why don't you just give it a little kiss? Isn't Ricky Martin having a concert? Oh, you mean we get racism, misogyny, explosions, and homophobia within the first 11 minutes of this mother? Is this movie running for president? It's a lot of cop work, for nothing. Henry Rollins sums up the entire Bad Boys franchise while inside the Bad Boys franchise, but it's honestly some of the most punk he's ever done. Tonight la policia jacked my mules. Nonsense. I hear that only happens in Tijuana, and those clubs are highly regulated. Same old different day. I mean, I could keep pointing out when the movie is advertising its own bull but it's easier just to add 15 sins and call it a day. So I don't know why you acting so angry about it. Oh, you're misinformed. I'm not angry. No, oh, you're very angry. Ooh, I'm not angry. Movie has time for this. This psychiatrist's office has a full goddamn skeleton in the corner because all doctors do all stuff with the body things in the bay verse. Ooh, sir. Ooh, sir. That therapist just gave him a blowjob. Mike must have fantastic insurance if that's covered. Also, I can't tell if this scene is more offensive to women or mental health providers. Probably both, so let's tack on 25 sins for how icky this is. A bunch of men hugging and kissing. That's some cold. That is all kinds of is. Everyone, Michael Bay has finally seen Fincher's Panic Room, and he decided it needed bayification. So far, every woman in this club is in her underwear, and I'm all for sexy women, but clubs aren't like that, and I've been to at least six clubs. I mean, this whole sequence just screams that drugs are pretty f***ing rad, right? He's seen a shrink. <laughs> right, Mike, we manly men only go to therapy if the therapist is hot and gives BJs. You know that Peanuts thing where Lucy would give psychiatric help for five cents? That had more respect for mental health than this movie. It's at this point that P. Diddy's Shake Your Tail Feather is playing, and I'd just like to point out that the song is a f***ing banger, especially Murphy Lee's verse, but also it does include Nelly Rapp singing the lyric, is that your ass or your mama half reindeer? So unfortunately I'm gonna have to send that. Also, Alonzo Mourning. His wound is fine, it's um, other things that were affected. Dick shaming. These two talk about when they're going to tell people about their relationship and it's shocking no one sees their conversation and body language out a window and figures it out on their own. Making that pool cost $3,900. <laughs> this above ground pool with a plastic ladder cost $4,000. You got absolutely played, man. This is a $1,200 pool max. Mike, can I see you by my stupid pool? Not only is this dog that was in the pool around 20 seconds ago out of the pool and completely dry, his ass is chained up. <laughs> That's some funny Said no one watching a Bad Boys movie. I like hip hop too. Peter Stormare is a creepy bastard with a weird accent and a movie cliche. This is a highly sophisticated drug cartel, and they have one woman that's packing all the pills for them. And without gloves? Isn't she absorbing some of every tab into her bloodstream? And if so, how is she not wasted right now? Lots of seconds of laundered money getting counted by machines. It's as exciting as it sounds. Look at these Fast and Furious wishes it could get Michael Bay to direct, because he directs the out of expensive sports cars. So this sin is for the Fast and Furious movies, just because I can. Agent down! Agent down! Well, sh that dude was an agent? How is it even possible to tell the difference between the agents, the pirates, the narcs, the dealers, the traffickers, the manufacturers, and the civilians anyway? I feel like they're all present in this scene. 
is it? How the f can he see that? For this 30 second stretch of car chase, no single shot lasts longer than two seconds. He has a gun, shoot him! But for God's sake, do not aim at any of those tires for any, wait, what? He shot the f***ing tire and it worked? Okay, fine, you subverted my sin. But then why doesn't he do this with all of these mother Hold on. <laughs> this f***ing works. Do you know who's where? No? Good. Then the movie has done its job. You may just be confused enough to think this is a great action set piece, when it's really a hotter mess than Bonfire of the Vanities. Ah! Ah! Honestly, with all the gunfire going on here, she should have long ago been shot to death. Don't lose a mic! How the f***ing f*** is he this far behind them in the first place? Shoot outside! Pay attention to what you're doing! More than one former girlfriend has said this to me. Well, these dudes is off the chain! Something that would definitely be said in this situation. <laughs> yeah, no. I know he walked off in a huff, but why isn't Marcus able to see this for a couple trying to stay secret, they sure do pack on the PDA. Tactical narcotic team. Captain yells at rogue detectives for making a mess while doing their jobs, cliche. Negative. I got a police commissioner so far up my ass. If he spits, it's, it's coming out of my mouth. I feel like of all the ham-handed punchlines for the lame so far up my ass joke, this may be the least inspired of all time. Did the script even want to finish the joke? The sunlight through the window is this bright man. Why do you need a lamp? All that. Was for nothing? Oh, we didn't do all of that. They didn't do any of that. How does a captain not know that the DEA, the pirate assholes, and the regular PD were the primary culprits here? Even if it's an undercover operation and he doesn't know how the DEA is involved, he's got to know something is f***ed up. So the fact that he would blame Marcus and Mike for all this bullshit, not to mention it takes this long for them to tell him that they didn't do it, is a colossal waste of everyone's time. Including you, dear viewer, for having to sit through this similarly rambling sin. Okay, boss's desk. Right to left. Uh, hear no evil bear, a uh, see no evil bear, and a... Uh, Another see no evil bear? Okay, fine, whatever. Then pipe, two incense burners, and oh god, more figurines. A speak no evil frog. Is that a speak no or a see no? Ah, f it. Then a hear no evil frog, then a. Oh, the third guy isn't doing anything with his hands, so he's just accepting the evil, I guess. But then the fourth frog is dick no evil? F no evil? Hands definitely at the crotch. Cloaca no evil? Then we have a weird figure on a tiny shoot of bamboo, which everyone knows is common on police desks. A hopefully fake grenade, some kind of cigar box wrapper thing, and a statue of what the f is that. Probably a Hindu god I don't recognize, and he's all woo-saw, so that fits. But my point is, why do you f up both sets of Something No Evil figurines? So I want you guys to do whatever you do, whatever it takes, but do it now. Contradicting Captain says, what? Cat mad at rats for snacking the scratch pops caps from his gat like that at the drop of a hat. Rat Rat Movie predicts my biggest problem with Endgame and The Departed. People is trying to jag my loads. You may think I'd make a gross pun about this line, and I desperately wanted to. But I'm more distracted by the discount Cuban Scott Stapp playing the main villain. Your mama probably refused you a tip when you were a baby. What? And yeah, he gets yelled at for this in a second, but the fact that it ever came out of his mouth is unbelievable. This goes on for a very, very, very extremely painfully long amount of time. Oh, now he has two guns. Game over, mother. The devil is not welcome here! Why did this guy's line get said like he was an NFL QB barking out an audible? You! Me! You! I see his point. I'm gonna kill you, mother Please, someone just do something. I swear to God, they've been in this position shooting randomly at each other for the last three hours. And I know this is a poor neighborhood, but no other cops hear any of these gunshots. It's like no man's land up in here. Come on down to Wacky Wick's wonderful world of widescreens, where you'll find the finest collection of TVs, VHS players, camcorders, five disc changers, and stupid plot conveniences this side of the Everglades. My ass still hurts. <sighs> from what you did to it the other night. Sigh, here's some misunderstood gay comedy for all you 90s fans that held on into the early aughts. And you two mother need Jesus. Evangelism. Looks like every time the PD goes after him, he sues for wrongful arrest, and old as he went. Why doesn't Miami PD try arresting him in a not wrongful way? Hey, use your computer brain and tap the phone. <laughs> um, well, that happens to be highly illegal without a judge. Also impossible without, you know, tapping the phones. You can't put a tap on a phone from a police department PC, can you? Especially not in 2003, right? Can you? Watch me work. Well, I'll be damned. This list is not sorted by anything. Not by first name, not by last name, not by sequential number of the phones, not even by the numbers in this far-right control column. This data isn't a list of anything, it's just data. Thankfully, the Tapia guy they're looking for is at the top of the list, so they don't have to actually try and find anything. They're explorers of the rat world, you know? They just, they just looking for rat I could really say this at any point in the movie, but I do want to point out that this mother is almost two and a half hours long. Seriously. They just like us. 
Speak for yourself, man. I prefer a reverse cow rat rusty trombone for my Tuesday afternoon kicks. Big Willie grabs a random handful of f***ing shredded paper from a goddamn living room, and that turns out to be actual evidence, because he's a bad boy, and bad boys are magic. A little something I put together. As useless as this character is, he'd still be the fourth best player on the 1996 Bulls. Or we could just stay here and get drunk. Thing I say to myself in the mirror of my bedroom every Wednesday through Tuesday night of the week. He found a seventh thing about a crock pot. There was no crock pot in that kitchen, at least not anywhere near the finger. She's attracted to these dumb, flashy, just muscle-bound dickheads. Of all the Marcus could bring up about Sid's choice in men, this is his number one complaint? That the guys she dates are too f***ing in shape? If you open the door, you'll be a black Dr. Phil for the next 40 minutes. Yeah, but I thought Dr. Phil was the white Oprah. Really out of respect for you, Marcus, you know, uh, nothing happened. I think Will Smith is describing the last several minutes of this f***ing movie. The hell is your problem, man? Why are you acting so stupid? Here's the problem with this scene. Mike's been super afraid to tell Marcus about him and Sid. Once he does, and Marcus shows the briefest bit of umbrage, he tells him to calm down. Then Marcus does calm down, tells Mike to focus, and then Mike gets all shouty and confrontational. I'm not saying human contradictions don't ever happen, but for this character, this shit is completely out of place. Especially when they were incredibly focused on the operation just a few minutes ago. God, I hate this movie. You like a pit bull with that little pink thing hanging out, Mike? I seriously think the pitch here was Bay saying, I have some stale action. Do you guys have any stale humor? If so, we should make another Bad Boys movie. Got him. But we certainly don't want to record any of this for evidential purposes. Here, use these binoculars. They're much more effective. This is police work here. Two city cops and a DEA undercover, none of whom told any bosses about this, sneak onto an active crime scene with their informant in tow. Party in the city where the heat is on all night on the beat till the break of dawn. Welcome to Miami. Bienvenidos a Miami. Wow, I wonder how many times they had to rehearse these driving scenes to get the timing so perfect. It really is a combination of the tenseness of the car chase and the French connection and the spectacle of the interstate scene in Matrix Reloaded. Loaded. I hope this won all the Oscars. This is not necessary! It really isn't. What's Mike's endgame here? Weren't they just supposed to be following the gangsters? What happens if they catch them? Aren't they back to square one? Try to break the world record for gun fights of the week! This is not the time to criticize! <clears throat> Hello there, sir. Mike Lowry, is it? We haven't met formally. Hi. I'm CinemaSense, and it is always the time to criticize. Hmm, I sure could go for an ice cold Coca-Cola right now. I'm a drug smuggler that just happens to own a mortuary, and I got a bunch of bodies hanging around with plenty of room in them. I could smuggle some <laughs> Johnny Tapia has the perfect cover. I know these assholes are bad boys, but they're also bad detectives, considering they're having this loud conversation about the intricacies of the case with an earshot of anyone around here. Every time we go after him, he sues us and wins. Gotta love a police captain who doesn't want to go after the big criminals because of a lawsuit fear. Jesus, since when has fear of a lawsuit been in an action movie plot point? Got a sneak and peek. Judge Sinclair said we can go into the mortuary tonight. You found an honest-to-God judge that wrote a warrant on the back of your illegal police work and illegal wiretaps that led to millions in damage from an extended car chase that made national news? That is honestly the least believable thing in this movie. Who leaves their high school yearbook sitting out in the open on top of a stack of books and magazines? A prop master that read the script. That's it. And that's the only who. Bad boys for life. Roll future credits. 100% up. Not funny. Not funny at all. These cops are psychopaths. You a virgin? Yes. All right, keep it that way. There ain't gonna be no in that night. <sighs> this goes on for way too long, considering it's not fun or funny and it's kind of horrifying. There's burnt people down here, Mike. Damn, somebody's teeth. Marcus is basically the narrator of this movie. I thought this was a super important facility for an international drug cartel, being the critical point of the operation. And there's barely any security? Why'd they even have to drop in from the roof? Especially if the people at the front were so distracted. They could have walked in through the back door. I smell dead people. Really? I smell lazy writers. What well, part of Marcus's performance at this mortuary would suggest that he would grab a random glass off the counter and drink from it? This is really the best way to get him on the ecstasy? I would have sooner bought that the pills flew out from the bag and landed up his ass. Textbook definition of running a red light. I mean, god damn. If you cut the Marcus and Jess X subplot, that alone saves you at least 10 minutes of bull Cut the car out of the house. Yep, yeah, that definitely won't raise any red flags during the build-up to this raid. Dan Marino should definitely buy this car that Peter Stormare just wrecked. This is for you, Joseph, and me and Mother Russia. Slippery Pete gets here to enact his revenge at the exact same time as the raid, which is a coincidence that's been wrapped in a convenience, then f***ed in the ass by a synchronism. This is what we do. You know, I really wanted to do a bonus round for how many times they say this very thing in this movie, but it's exhausting going back through this movie to find all the instances. So let's just guesstimate and put it at, oh, say, 37. Of all the shots to slow motion, he picks the listening to a cell phone in anger. The United States does not negotiate with any hostage takers. 
especially Cuban hostage takers. Look, if the first sentence says any, then the second sentence doesn't need to add a specific ethnicity of hostage takers. Any pretty much covers it. It's a delicate situation. This is not just a situation. It's my sister. Who's a federal agent who knew the risks of the job and you cannot f invade Cuba just because you love your sissy? God damn it. Look like you're about to do something stupid. I'm in. The director of photography to Michael Bay is circa 2001. So with the safe house right across the street from Tapia's crib. This is the last place anyone would look. Well, sure, even if you stepped out the back door for a smoke, they definitely wouldn't see you mother standing in the window right now. They'd be looking on the other side of the island, for sure. Somehow, this plan to take down a Miami drug lord that uses a mortuary to transport drugs ends up in Cuba, where our heroes still feel compelled to sneak into somewhere inside a coffin. It's like Michael Bay bought a thousand coffins and really wanted to get his money's worth. Just to save you the trouble, let me sum up the next five minutes of the movie for you. Gun. Gun. Smash. Gun gun. Smashy smashy. Shouty shout shout. Explosion. Yell explosion. Gun. Shout shout. Explosion gun. Got all that? Also, I don't get this operation. Their entire goal is to get sit, right? So after all that planning, why would they go in like this, guns a-blazing? They have to know Tapia could just threaten to kill her at any moment, right? And the fact that he doesn't do that somehow makes this all so very much worse. Holy sh guys, this should be World War III right here, man. Miami cops and the feds are straight up communist Cuba in this climax. Ah, huh, what? This thing is still going? So wait, all these Marines are lined up, ready to fire, but they let the gunfight between the Cubans and the bad boys play out regardless? Damn, I bet Sid was easily the family cornhole champion during backyard barbecues growing up. Huh, well, at least this movie recycles. I think you and I are destined to do this forever. You'll be in a better jail forever. His wound is fine. It's, um... Other things that were affected. Oh. Oh. Damn it, Gina! Got you! I've heard relationships based on intense experiences never work. Okay. We'll have to base it on sex then. Who? Who doesn't want to wear the ribbon?